Good afternoon, Fabius Pompey. This is the Falcon News Network, and we are back. Sadly, we are missing Dom again this week, but if you see him, wish him a speedy recovery. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel by adding our Google Classroom code with I2346HD. My name is Aubrey Dunham. And my name is Serena Hendricks, and let's go to Chloe and Josie to see if there is some spring weather for break, spring break. Hello, this is Chloe with your weekly weather. Although it is going to be a bit rainy next week, it's looking a bit more like spring. No snow! We even get into the high 50s. Get outside next week and enjoy the weather. Back to you, Aubrey and Serena. We sat down with Mrs. Lang and Mrs. Schmiedel, and they updated us on the recent band trip to Washington, D.C. And I'm Josie Mokri. This is Mrs. Schmiedel and Mrs. Lang. And they're here to tell us about the Washington, D.C. trip. So, how was the high school band trip to Washington, D.C.? Um, it was great. We left uh, last Friday um, from school early in the morning, and we traveled down to D.C. It took us about six hours to get there, and we arrived to 82 degrees in sunshine, which was wonderful. <laughs> um, and uh, we had the competition that night and got out for dinner and then went to see some of the monuments in the evening, and it was also peak cherry blossom season, which is a very special thing to see if you are in Washington, D.C., and we got to see that, which was wonderful. Absolutely. Two more days of, of tourism things, and that was pretty much the whole trip, which was great. Yeah. Tell us about the concert. What song did the band play? Did they win any awards? Yeah, um, we played three pieces for evaluation by a panel of judges that are all from local colleges and universities. Um, we played a level six piece called Symphonic Dance Number no. 3, and a piece called Shepherd's Head, and another one called Rodetsky March. Um, we played in a beautiful hall at a community college in Northern Virginia in Alexandria. And uh, the band did really well. They won the best in their class. They also won an award for the best overall um, instrumental group at the festival, which we are, have never won here before from that particular festival at Fabius Pompey, so we're very proud of that. Tell us the highlights of the trip. Trip. What did the students find most interesting? Where did you have the most fun? I think one of the standout moments of the trip was when we all got to go see The Wiz, and we saw that in historic Ford's Theater, which is where President Lincoln was assassinated, and we were there for the 153rd anniversary of his assassination. And what was really neat about seeing that is um, we had to go to the museum in the basement where we saw all the artifacts. And then during the show, we were sitting on the same level as the presidential box, which was still decked out in, in all of the, the decorations from the incident. Um, so that was really impressive to see. We enjoyed touring the monuments at night. I know we speed walked through it, but it was still an impressive sight to see. And the Capitol tour was absolutely fascinating. Uh, one thing that students might say is not a highlight, but of super import to the trip was the tour of the Holocaust Museum, something that everyone should definitely see in their lifetime. On um, April 14th, I forget the year though, for the assassination, 1865. Thank you so much, Mrs. Schmiedel and Mrs. Lane for coming in. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chloe Carr, for finding us the meme of the week. And now here she is with the book of the week. Every four years, two children get taken from their homes, one a hero, one a villain. They disappear without another word. When the kids disappear, they reappear in a fairy retail book from the local merchant. Two best friends, Sophie and Agatha, are perfect for these roles. As the most beautiful girl in Gavadon, Sophie has dreamed of being kidnapped into the enchanted world her whole life. Agatha, however, wants nothing to do with this school of good and evil. But, as fate might have it, the two friends do get kidnapped and put in the wrong schools. Sophie goes to the school of evil, and Agatha gets put into the school of good. Curious to see what lies ahead for our fateful characters? Well, luckily for you, the school of good and evil is located at the library, and if you're interested, you can go and get it and read it yourself. Thank you so much, Chloe. Sounds like a great book. Fantastic read. Let's check in with Andrew and Joey for our gaming tip of the week. This is Andrew with your gaming tip of the week. The PS5 has a probable release date of late 2020 with a probable price point of $399. This is Joey. Gamers are hoping for a new system that can bring gaming to a new level. And designers are currently working on a game that to play on the system. Most likely, Sucker Punch's Ghost of Tsushima will appear on the PS5. Do not be fooled by any video games on the PS5. No video has been released. Sports season has finally begun, and we have some stats for you. So let's go to Bella, Chloe, and Josie. The varsity baseball team had an excellent game and won against OCS. 
The final score was 13 to three. Evan Wagner only gave up two earned runs off of two hits and tallied up six strikeouts. Eric Beardsley went three for three with a walk. Jack Claywitter had three RBIs. FP scored seven runs in the third inning to burst it open. Go Falcons! Back in with Jossie and Bella for the inspiration quote of the week. The quote of the week is, you have no boundaries in what you can achieve. So this break, try something new. Stop! Freshmen, sophomores, Juniors, seniors, you think you can do better? Join us for the Falcon News Network informational meeting on Monday during AP After Break and prove to us who is the best video announcement creator. See you then. If you have any questions, feel free to see me in the library at any time. Thank you.